What's up nieces and nephews, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do the road test, range test, and maybe if we can find a hill here in the great state of Florida, we'll do like a little uphill test or whatever on the Eora Knight M1 PS electric scooter that I just did the unboxing video for two weeks ago. I'm pretty excited about it. It's Easter Sunday, I'm hoping with all that I have in my soul, that the roads are gonna be a little bit empty while everybody's at home or getting out of church or whatever they're doing. To get things started off right, I'm gonna make sure this thing is fully charged. I did charge it two days ago. Let's just plug this in right here. All right, we got the red light. We know she's charging. We'll check back in when it's uh, fully green and uh, we'll get this shindig started. It's been about a half hour. I did step inside for a little bit, so I'm not sure how long it took, but I wanna show you we are we are fully green, so we're gonna pull this bad boy out, wipe it down a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna see what kind of trouble we can or cannot get into on the Eora Knight M1 PS. Let's do it, baby. All right, boys, here she is. Here she is, all charged up and ready to go. Uh, we're gonna do several things on here. We might even frequent some uh, local biker establishments. Uh, let me get the key out of my pocket because we're gonna start this thing uh, a couple of different ways while we're out. I'm not gonna put my phone on the phone mount. I'm gonna leave it in my pocket. So this thing comes with a fob. If I don't feel like sticking the key in, I can just hit this little flash button twice. There she goes, baby. This Knight M1 PS is rated for a 440 pound payload. Uh, your old uncle is about 250. So uh, uh, we're about midway through the range. Well, I definitely could be a lot lighter for my own health. I know that that will have some sort of impact on the range, the speed. So we're in park right now. Uh, if, if you're sitting still and it's on, you don't have your hand on the brakes, it stays in park. We're gonna hit that and it goes right back into the gears. All right, let's head out and do it, baby. We're gonna start in first gear. Most of my riding today is gonna be in uh, third gear. I already know it. And um, when I do that, it's going to have an impact on the range, the torque. Yeah, I'm at 20, 21 miles an hour in first gear. That's about all she's gonna gonna do there, um, which is fine. If, I, if I'm in a place where I know I'm not gonna be moving too fast, maybe I'm in traffic, you know how it is. You know, maybe first gear, because now I'm gonna reduce the amount of torque going to the rear wheel, and I don't have to worry so much about the battery draining as quickly. Uh, but we're not in that situation, so let's see if we can put it in second on the fly. Yes, we can. And it picks up significantly by knowing that. Hell yeah, brother. All right, we're about 30 miles an hour. Uh, that wasn't the maximum. Let's see if we can get there. Uh, it's close. Yeah, so we're about 30 miles an hour maximum in uh, in second gear, which, which is plenty, right? And, and that's going to be, again, more for urban riding, etc. One of the one of the best videos on this uh e-bike that I've watched. Uh, the guy was in LA. I just put it third, get it moving. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit different. We got we got a lot more country riding back here. We're gonna see how this thing does on the back roads of Central Florida, baby. Cause I wanna see how this thing does on a hill. Uh, not that I'm ever going to encounter that too much, really. Uh, you guys know how Central Florida or Florida in general is. We don't really have hills, but I think, uh, I think if I wanted to test it, so here we go. Actually, what we're gonna do is, uh, let's put on the blinker. I'm gonna let this car go past me and we're gonna see how this thing does on acceleration up the hill, like regardless, right? Go past me. All right, nobody's coming. Here we go. Oh boy, third gear, baby. Even though I'm not at the heaviest weight, I'm kind of a big guy. So I know that's gonna impact the range, the torque, all that stuff associated with uh, performance of a, an electric motorcycle scooter. Oh, we started, uh, I meant to point it out, we started with seven miles on the odometer. There's some other guys out there that were using apps to kind of to track their overall mileage. We're not doing that. I'm at 47 miles an hour right now. That was coming off of that uphill. 48, 49, 50. Yeah, let's hit these back roads, man. Okay, some of the battery came back. I'm going to assume that this thing's trying to average like the amount of juice we're using and give you a guesstimate if you keep it in that range yeah definitely definitely moving it or keeping it pinned um, causes that little gauge to move i do have the headlight on i do not have a phone charge keep in mind that anything you do electrically on this little thing or any e-bike is going to pull from the same battery that's driving the motor so you know be careful 
Man, it's so pretty back here. And uh, you guys know I like my loud pipes on my Harley Davidson, but it is kind of peaceful, you know, cruising through here and not really making any noise. Uh, I kind of dig that, you know? It's definitely, it's so torquey. Like when you, when you are off of it and you get on it, you can feel that motor kick in, that torque. You can't deny the, uh, the torque on an electric motor. Oh yeah, there's the hill. Okay, she doesn't want to get over 44 on that hill. And I think it's because I was already moving, right? So the range that's listed on the website, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I will put it up here like as a little uh, flash, uh, flash on the screen or whatever. The maximum range is going to be in the in the first gear. Um, obviously you're not using as much power in first gear. So it means you can go farther, I guess. But uh, my, my, my question is, you're, you know, if I max out at 20 miles an hour, is it gonna go farther or just gonna last longer? And you're going to go the same distance as if you were in third you know uh, i'm not an engineer or a scientist so but they, i think those are valid questions right you can't believe this cadillac's about to get smoked by an e-bike come on baby we're going to turn right here because i know this comes out by the uh the old glenwood tavern we're going to head uh head towards old d land and see what we can get into what do you think the balance on this thing is great like i, I mean most most bikers motorcyclists whatever can almost come to a complete stop anyway but like i didn't feel any sort of pressure to put on the gas or anything there i keep watching my mirrors man i know i'm a lot smaller and even though i have lights on this thing i know it's uh, harder to be seen i'm definitely not heard like when i had the loud exhaust on my harley davidson so it would as with anyone you know pay attention to your surroundings make sure everything's safe I can't believe 51 miles an hour. I know I had a little hill assist there, but yeah, a little bit of hill there slowed me down from 51 to 47 without really, you know, taking off the throttle. Here we go again, another hill. I'm not taking it off the throttle. You know, she's bouncing back and forth, 49, 47. But this is absolutely a, a beautiful day to be doing this. Like I said earlier, it's Easter day here in the US and uh, I was hoping for not much traffic on the roads. So far, so good. Uh, but we're going to test this thing. We're going to get down to, uh, we're going to go through downtown to land and see how it performs uh, in that type of environment. Uh, I'm actually hoping for a little bit more, a little bit more stop and go down there so I can just see how she does. I do have a, uh, a non-expired motorcycle license plate on this night in 1PS. Does it belong to this motorcycle? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let your uh, imagination run wild on that one. Let's just, uh, for the sake of argument, say it is. Uh, what we've determined about DeLand is that it's uh, it's primarily retired people and college students. Like, there's not a whole lot of in-between. Uh, but I do like riding through here because it's uh, it's beautiful. What I want to show you here, too, while we're stopped at this light, hopefully we're stopped long enough for it to make a difference. But these battery bar indicators will actually go up. Again, kind of building off of my hypothesis that it kind of uh, anticipates, based on your current state, what you're doing. And it's not doing anything. It, it kind of gives you a, a little battery indicator. Like for, We just took off there, and one of the battery markers disappears. So... Uh, are we going to get 40 miles on this thing? 50 miles? I don't know. You know, uh, we're, we're going to find out, right? Yeah, old Florida, man. Old historic downtowns all throughout Florida, especially central Florida. Just so pretty. And it looks like we might, uh, unless I get a string of green lights, looks like we might actually get what I was hoping for, which is, you know, a little bit of stop and go in some traffic, see how she handles. I got to tell you, you know, I've only ridden this thing in the neighborhood until today. And, um, and I'm really impressed with the brakes. You know, as long as you know how to brake, you know, a little pressure progressively added as you come to a stop works fine. It feel really solid. See, this is a this is the kind of spot where let's get down into one. There's two. We're gonna we're gonna keep it in two. I don't think uh, one has the torque I'm looking for. I, I think you can uh, I think you can prolong your battery life um, if you monitor that and, and choose the appropriate gear for whatever current situation you're in. 
It's a little more foot traffic uh, downtown to land than I thought there would be. And honestly, I didn't think anything would be open. DeLand is one of those, uh, D-Land, I keep saying DeLand, it's D-Land. D-Land is one of those towns that it's kind of sleepy after hours, you know what I mean? There's not a whole lot going on. So I surely would have thought on Easter Sunday that they'd, uh, everything down here would be closed. But uh, hey, if you want to make a buck, got to do it every day. I will say, man, it is really odd coming to a stop and not hearing or feeling my uh, twin cam rumble <laughs> beneath my legs, you know? Yeah, it's a little different. Hey, look how slow we're going through here. I mean, I know it's a low speed limit, but it definitely isn't 14 miles an hour through here. Okay, time to kick it up a little bit. So we've gone 10 miles. It, um, the odometer was on seven miles when we left the house. We're at 17 now. So we've gone about 10 miles. Actually went by a lot quicker than I thought it would. And I'm uh, way above the speed limit. All right, we're gonna stop here for a little bit. I'm actually gonna set up a tripod and I do, do some little things, kind of see what it looks like. I will say doing a couple little quick turns into this parking lot, it does scrape. Uh, these things are still pretty low. It's got a lot more leaning capability, but it's being hindered by the bottom of the frame there and the uh, and the peg. But uh, So we turned it on by double clicking this little lightning bolt. You can turn it off by double clicking the unlock button. And uh, like I said, we're gonna start and stop the same a couple ways. So we're gonna use a traditional key method. Just turn it on. There she goes, she's ready. Let's put it in one, hell yeah. Okay, and for safety and security, like most motorcycles, uh, you can lock it. So um, I like that it's not a separate keyhole. A lot of bikes have that. Just keep turning that thing around to the, to the next position. You turn it counterclockwise and she's locked. I love it. Let's keep riding uh, with the key in. Let's be conventional, shall we? Yeah, baby, here we go. Coming up on uh, Minnesota. It's my favorite, favorite street for the uh, historic homes. Yeah, look at these. I mean, there's some more back there on that intersection, but, uh, and this is nice too, because sometimes when you're in like these uh, bougie areas, I kind of feel guilty, like with my Harley, <laughs> you know, with the exhaust going all loud and stuff. I mean, I love my loud exhaust, but sometimes you just want to keep the peace in the neighborhood. This is a great way. It's a great way to do it. I think, uh, I think the more I, I I'm, I'm going to use this thing more i really am you know for local things i need to do but i think one of the things i need to put on here is like a swing arm bag and or a little fork bag something uh we're still we're just cruising along in second gear man i mean uh in the neighborhood it kind of got up to 31 but you know around the hills you know up and down a little bit we're you know we're staying about 35 miles an hour which for a lot of these streets in these small towns is fine I did put her in second gear on that last little stretch of road. The speed limit was 35 anyway, and uh, it kept the battery in like two to three bars. So yeah, speaking of bars, hell yeah, baby. We're almost at the badass biker bar. We're gonna be a badass. I got my uh, I got my Harley Davidson colored shoes on. I got my badass biker vest. Uh, I am prepared for the stairs, my friend. I don't trust that these blinkers are bright enough. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, they love to see me coming. I'm going to put it in first gear, try to conserve some of this battery. Yeehaw. We're going to park it right here next to some of these Harley Davidsons, baby. Nice. Oh, look, it jumped back up to four, four bars. All right, we're going to see you inside. <laughs> oh, mama just rolled up. And I'm going to tell you that I could see her big ass grin and laugh inside the Jeep as she's pulling up. Yes. Because why? Because my bike looks too badass to be in this parking lot? Yes. Uh, we met a fellow named Bill uh, sitting over there. He's Oh, he's going to bring it over. He's got an e-bike as well. So he was asking me a lot of the numbers, like amp hours and how many volts, etc. Some of these questions that I don't know, but that I will display on the screen here. And uh, he's going to he's gonna roll his e-bike over here and take a look. So that's kind of cool. I thought rolling up into here I was going to be looked at with, with sin and disgust in people's eyes. But 
not necessarily the case. All right, we had uh, we had a little lunch. Look at all the Harley Davidsons here now. All right, well now I got four bars left, so uh, maybe I was a little worried for nothing. So we're gonna actually hit up another um, a little biker bar. We're, we're gonna do what we can to uh, push our luck on this thing. I, I love this thing. I, I mean, I, I wish I was recording all of it, but I've got so many compliments, and uh, you know, I met that guy Bill here a little bit ago who was really into e-bikes, and he had a lot of questions. Basically, I thought I was going to be a complete outcast up there, and uh, it actually sparked more interest than it did uh, ire, if that makes any sense. Yeah, baby. Oh, we gained some juice while we were sitting there. Maybe this thing has a little hidden solar panel I wasn't aware of. Hey, man, bro. Okay, there's our one bar again. I, I think I'm fine. It's been a blast. You know, I almost put this video off. I almost didn't do it today. And, um, you know, about 1.15, I said, ah, screw it. And I'm still kind of like, ah, do I really want to? I'm so glad. I'm so glad I've been out on this thing all day. I mean, we're st we still haven't gotten to, um, I still have to figure out maximum range. So, you know, assuming that I make it to this bar and back home, I I I've still got to kind of try to exhaust this battery a little bit. So I might just run it up and down the same street over and over until I get the uh, <laughs> low charge indicator. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, see, I'm not even worried. But see, on this road, like the speed limit is 35. So I can realistically put it on second gear and uh, it's going to pretty much max out at 35. And I won't be using as much of the, of the battery, of the juice. So I think we're in good hands, baby. And uh, as of right now, we're at 22 miles. Look, I just gained another bar back. It's great. Absolutely great. I get to enjoy the scenery. Yeah, I love it, man. So quiet, no vibration. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna bump it up to third gear. <laughs> Sorry, I don't feel like going 35 only. Second gear is fantastic. I mean, if you're gonna be a law-abiding citizen, second gear is great. Uh, going through a road like this because you can save battery life and um, you know you can do the speed limit. So, oh yeah, the old Glenwood Tavern. It's become one of our favorite spots. Look at all the cars there, man. I don't have the uh, low charge indicator, and I was watching this other guy doing his review on this thing. Juiced Joyrides is his name, and uh, at some point he got to about where I'm at, and he he was getting this flashing low charge indicator, and I haven't gotten to that point yet. But yeah, what a busy spot right now. This is a different kind of biker bar. This is uh, this is a one percent bar. Make it through the sand. <laughs> That's gonna be a trick. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. We're going to uh, unintentionally test the uh, headlights and shit. This thing says I have three little batteries left. We're going to put it in third gear. All right, y'all, that's going to uh, that's gonna wrap this one up. Uh, as you can tell there, my, uh, my GoPro battery died. Normally I carry spares and stuff with me, but I wanted to maximize the storage space in my backpack that day and minimize the amount of weight. I'm already carrying plenty of weight <laughs> on that e-bike myself. After leaving Glenwood Tavern, uh, when I got home, I had uh, 34 miles on the odometer. It's, uh, so that's 27 miles. I just started getting the charge indicator. Uh, judging by some other videos that I've watched uh, of people doing the range test on these, when that low flash indicator comes on, I have about 20% battery left. If 27 miles is 75%, we'll, we'll say we'll say 35 miles. But keep in mind, keep in mind that I'm 250 pounds. Uh, you, you can increase the, your your range <laughs> if you're a lot lighter than I am. My M1 PS experience, I was in third gear the vast majority of the day. And I was doing uh, 40 to 50 miles per hour the vast majority of the day. If you wanna maximize it, uh, you're gonna keep it in first or second gear and you're gonna get a lot more distance out of it. So I had a blast. Uh, this video, I recorded everything that uh, was on this video on Easter Sunday. Today is now Wednesday, so three days later. I have charged it since then and even yesterday. I was off yesterday. I, I, I ran two errands on it. You know, I, I had to go to a hardware store and I had to go to an auto parts store. You know, I went there, came home, went the other place, came home, you know, maybe a total of 10 miles, you know, and it didn't use much battery. It's just, just a fun little scoot. And, uh, 
Yeah, highly, highly recommend it. My direct link, if you want to get $400 off, one of these is going to be down below in the description and in the pinned comment. Um, I, I love the thing. If you decide to invest in one, I hope you're going to love it too. I think you're going to love it. So yeah, thanks for coming along. And until next time, we'll see you later.